Hello and welcome back once again to this, the latest episode of Lisburn Distillery TV. As ever, today's show is a packed one, so without further ado, let's have a look at what's coming up. First up, we have the highlights from an intriguing game last Saturday when Lisburn Distillery hosted a Premier Intermediate League game against Armagh City. David Hunter will be catching up with the latest winner of the Dunville's Whiskey Player of the Month, this time for January 2019. And finally, we'll have some details on the White's next fixture, which sees them travel to take on high flying Tobermore United. After our game against Armagh City was postponed back on February 2nd, both sides agreed to rearrange the game for last Saturday, February the 9th. Having drawn one each at Armagh earlier in the season, this was always going to be a tight affair, although I think it would be fair comment to say that no one expected the game to take on as many twists and turns over the 90 minutes of play. Here's the match highlight. Both teams requiring points out of this game for very different reasons. This was always going to be a tight affair at New Grosvenor. And Armagh's Andrew Wilson were disappointed not to take better control of the ball from this cross. Armagh continued to have the better of the game in the opening stages and in 15 minutes their efforts were rewarded when a penalty was awarded following Barry Moore pulling down former distillery player Ryan Corrigan. <music> Up stepped the evergreen Shea Campbell to strike the penalty. But on this occasion, it was saved by Jonah Nicholl in the distillery goal who parried the ball wide. Distillery battled their way back into the game and following this free kick from Aaron Harris, skipper Stephen Curley was unlucky not to see this ever going into the back of the net. Well saved however by Daniel Devine in the arm at goal. Armagh however were constantly a threat and continued to beat the distillery offside. This particular effort had to be well saved by White's keeper Jonah Nicholl to prevent the visitors taking the lead. The Whites however continued to battle and following great work out wide from number 2 Josh Doyle, Matthew Swan had been disappointed not to convert this particular effort from close range. Just as the scene the sides were due to win goalless at half time, the deadlock was eventually broken when in 45 minutes a great cross from Connor Curran found recent sign Dara Rooney who headed home powerfully from close range. 1-0 to the story. seemed destined to go into the break, leading by one goal to nil. However, this wasn't to be the case, as a through ball found veteran striker Shea Calvin the clear, and he was clipped on the back of the heels by Stuart Moore, the referee having no hesitation in awarding the visitors a second penalty. Once again, it was Campbell who stepped up to take the penalty, and on this occasion he was successful. Armagh said it scored, and the teams went in the break at one goal each. Six minutes have passed in the second half when went to Stully regained the lead. A headed ball through from Aaron Harris, so a Darren pulled down in the penalty area, and this time a third penalty of the game was awarded, but on this occasion to the home side, this burned to Stully. 
Up stepped the Sullivan midfielder James Wright, and he made no mistake in the spot to give the home side a 2 1 lead. Things then went from bad to worse for the visitors as Sean Mallon was dismissed for an off-the-ball incident in the 56th minute. The Whites seemed to be in the driving seat at this time. However, on 66 minutes, Armagh were right back into it when substitute Stephen McKenna was brought down in the box by White's keeper Jonah Nicholl and the referee once again pointed to the spot for the fourth time during the game. Once again it was veteran striker Shea Campbell who stepped up to take the penalty and once again he converted his second conversion from three attempts on the day. Two each with all to play for. So once again it was a case of what might have been for Lisburn story, having to sell for a point instead of all three. So then, a point for the Whites, however I doubt few of us would have been placing a bet on the game to feature no less than four penalties and a red card on the day. Looking back on the awarding of all four penalties, there's no doubt that everyone will have their own opinions on the referee's decisions on the day, so I'm not going to pass any comments and instead allow you, the viewer, to have your own thoughts on the calls that certainly had an impact on the final scoreline of the match. The point picked up by the story on Saturday means no movement for the Whites in the league standings as they remain in fifth place. However, for the visitors' Armagh, it did mean a one climb up the table into eighth position. The winner of the January 2019 Dunville's Whiskey Player of the Month was midfielder Johnny McCaw. Johnny's season to date has been one which has been disrupted by injury, so it was really great to see him picking up the award and understandably he was delighted when David Hunter spoke to him after Saturday's game. Hello again everyone. Well it's been a wet day here at New Grosvenor, however time is moving on rapidly and it's that time of the month when we announce the Dunville's Whiskey Player of the Month. However, before announcing the January winner, uh, congratulations to Dunville's. Uh, they performed magnificently in the World Whiskey Awards, picking up three awards. So well done to Shane Braniff and his team down there and to Master Distiller Graham Miller. The January Player of the Month, I'm delighted to say, was won by Johnny McCaw. Johnny, it's been a cool day, a hard match against Armagh City. Thanks for joining me. Uh, congratulations on the award. Well done. What, what was your reaction to it? Um, it's always nice to win an award. Um, it's been tough coming back from injury and stuff. It's always nice to get back into the team and try and do what you can. Today was tough, the weather, everything. Just a tough uh, dog battle, but this <laughs> is how it goes. And that's football. To each straw was it's a bit hard. A bit hard to take for us because we need all three points. But it's you have to take it. It's a point on your boat on the board first. You have to move on. You were uh, very active during the game. Uh, do you get that sort of uplift from being announced as a winner? When you get an award, it's I think it does. It gives everyone a wee spring in their step and gives you a wee bit of a buzz, a wee bit of motivation, a wee bit of confidence to try and give a wee bit more and try and show what what you're about and. Yep. Give a wee bit of, guess give a bit of support for the team. So it does. 
Uh, another knock today, but I think probably you're all right for Tuesday night. Hi, definitely no. Um, just it's always nice to get over a bit of a niggle. Um, kept me out for a bit of a while, but it's good to be back, and it's it's nice to get back out in the pits with all the boys and enjoying it again. Okay, well done on your award, Johnny, and uh, well done to our friends uh, at Ecklandville for uh, the awards that the Dunville's brand picked up at the World Whiskey Awards. Time is flying in, it'll not be that long, but we'll be back again with the February award in a few weeks' time. After our recent game against Ironman City, the Whites faced two daunting fixtures. Firstly away to second place Anna United, in a game which will have been played by the time this show is broadcasted, and then away to third place Topermore United. Highlights from both games will be on our next episode of LDTV. However, if you're free this Saturday, that's Saturday the 16th of February, why not come down to Topermore and support the team in that game? Kick-off is at 3 o'clock p.m. and as ever your support would be greatly appreciated. So that brings us to the end of today's show. Thanks so much as ever for tuning in and for your support for this Burnish Dolly Football Club. Until the next time, come on you whites. Bye for now.